Hi, in this screencast we'll talk more about features and descriptors and how they can be used in a simple object detector. It is recommended to watch the previous screencast for a basic introduction to the subject. Here we have a very simple application that reads and displays images from the video file. It also stores the image of the car from the very first frame and detects ORP features. Let's have a look. Here is the video. The detected features are shown with small color circles around them. Now let's try to detect the white car from the first frame on the successive frames. There's multiple ways to approach this, but today we'll see how to utilize features and descriptors for this task. As been discussed in the previous screencast, a feature is basically a point in the image that is interesting in some way, but quite often the mere fact that the point is interesting is not enough. Often we want to compare the features from different images and ask, do these features look alike? For example, this feature and that feature look similar, but this one and that one do not. It would be useful for our task to measure the similarity, because if we find out that a lot of the car features present in one place in the image, it probably means that the whole car is located there. In practice, people use so-called descriptors to encode the surroundings of the feature for further comparison. ORP is one of them. We'll omit the details about how it is constructed, since they are not very relevant for us. The only thing we need to know to proceed is that we can store the descriptors in a mat. So to extract the descriptors for each feature, we create mats to hold them and provide those to the respective detection calls. After that, each column in those mats contain the descriptor for the respective feature. Now having the descriptors, we can try to match them, find the features of the car on the big image. For this, we'll use the simple brute force matcher. It will compare every pair of descriptors and choose the best matches. The result will be stored in a vector of dematch structures. Now let's see what was found. To illustrate the matches, we'll use draw matches function. It takes two images with their key points along with the vector of matches and returns the combined image. Let's see how it looks like. One thing to notice is that we have some false matches here, but we also have a lot of good matches. Let's try to utilize them and see if it's enough. First, we extract the matched points to separate vectors. Every dematch object holds a pair of indices of the corresponding key points. They are called query and train indices. So we simply use them to push the points to the respective vectors. Now the two vectors contain the corresponding pairs of points in two images, the car image and the scene image. Using these pairs we can try to find the homography transformation between the images. In other words, we can find a 3 by 3 matrix that will transform the coordinates of points in car image to coordinates in scene image. We'll use find homography function for that. We provided the vectors with the corresponding points and CV and Zach flag as a last parameter. This way we told the function that there could be false matches in the provided vector and it should try to filter out the outliers using Ranzac procedure. And that's basically it. All the substantial operations are done and the car is hopefully detected in the scene. Its position is represented by the homography matrix. So now we only have to struggle a bit to draw the result. First, we create two vectors to hold corner points of the bounding boxes and fill the one we already know with corners of the car image.
Then we put each point into perspective space and multiply it by a homography matrix. After this, we convert it back to point and push it to the image border vector. Lastly, we have to draw the resultant shape using the polar lines function. It will connect sequential points with straight lines and close the shape, resulting in four lines overall for our case. Now let's see if it works. The green shape around the car is our estimate for the car position. We can see that it works for several frames even in presence of false matches. Unfortunately, it loses it after some time. But notably, it starts detecting it again as the sequence goes further and loses it completely only when the car goes out of frame. That's not a bad result for such a simple procedure that we have here. Obviously, there's a lot of room for improvement. For example, we could try to combine this approach with optical flow or filter out the outliers better. But we'll leave it here, so you can try out your own ideas. Good luck!